All right. So, hey, everybody. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do today to uh, kind of warm you up on the call a little bit is to run back through the logic behind the universal callback script. So maybe we could, for a change, make this a bit interactive. Can anyone tell me what the introduction, the purpose of the introduction to the universal callback script is? It allows us to fly under the advertising radar. That's right. So what we're trying to do is um, make sure that they feel as though we're just really kind of doing a follow-up service type of call. We're trying to make sure that they feel as though we're, we're trying to operate on the law of reciprocity, where we're following up to make sure that the website's working out fine for them and they're, getting, uh, they're having the ability to search for all the different properties from all the different real estate companies. And uh, that does two things. It makes it seem like we're different, and it makes it seem like we are, um, you know, we're giving them something for free, and we're making sure that it works. And then that should trigger the law of reciprocity in their mind that would uh, make them feel like, hey, we're just trying to do a good job for them. All right. So does anyone want to tell me the number one uh, mistake that is made moving from the introduction to the um, motivation and timing portion? I don't know, Adam, if you've been able to unmute the other folks on the call, but you guys can go ahead and answer there in the office. Oh, mingling the, the, the benefit with the appointment. Well, that's the number. That's, I, uh, that is absolutely one of the biggest mistakes, but it's not the one I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of when you transition from the introduction to the questions about the timing and motivation. Uh, the most common mistake that's made there is that um, a prospect, after you do the introduction, you have to put your mind in the in the in the. You have to put your mind as if you have to think as if you were the buyer. And if you're the buyer, you're searching on the internet for homes for sale, and you very likely opted into more than one site. And you you might be a little bit surprised by a phone call. So you have to remember that you have very often somebody's either going to say the majority of the responses after the introduction fall into one of two categories, huh, or what, or confusion, that's the category, and in that confused state, you have to have be ready for a clarification statement, and the clarification statement that I teach is, oh, hey, Adam, it's uh, Scott with Free Washington Search, that's the website you registered on to see all the different properties from all the different real estate companies, are you thinking about making a move soon? The most common mistake is that people wait for an answer twice. You only wait for an answer from the prospect once in the introduction. If they say, huh, or they sound confused, you restate to clarify why you're calling and roll right into the script. Obviously, if they say, I love your site, it's the best site I've ever seen, I love that thing, you, you just, you know, Show them that you're grateful, and then you roll into the script. That's the first mistake that's made, and that's that. Okay? Any questions or comments? Adam, have you been able to unmute folks? Or you have yes. that? Okay. No, we're good. Any other folks outside of my office that have any comments or questions on that part? All right. Um, I will tell you that I listen into a lot of the calls, the guys outside my office, and they're probably grinning ear to ear that I'm not there today. And um, what happens is they hear objections and they go down rabbit trails that I no longer experience because I am a little bit better at controlling the call. If you lose control of the call, if, if think of it this way. If I had to teach you every objection handler on the planet, the book would be rather, rather thick. But if you stay on, if you keep the call and you stay in control of the call, there are many, much fewer objections, much fewer objections. All right, so, so from the introduction, back to uh, describing the universal callback script, from the introduction you go to the questions that establish motivation and timing. That are the only purpose. You want to know whether this prospect wants to buy a house in, in the next three to six months and, or longer, and whether they have a house to sell or not. 
whether they rent or they own, whether they have an agent or not. Those are the primary reasons, and there's a couple more questions. So um, because this isn't the first time I've ever done this, I'm actually sitting parked, thankfully, in my car, and I don't even have my universal callback script in front of me. But the first question after the introduction is, uh, are you thinking about making a move in the next little while? All right. And then it's yes or no, and then do you rent or do you own? The reason I say, do you, are you thinking about making a move in the next little while? The script says three to six months is because you never want to ask a question that you know the answer to because then you look like you're reading off a script. So I trained myself to say, are you thinking about making a move in the next little while? And then if they tell me three to six months, great. I just feel like it doesn't sound as much like a script. That's just my preference. You can create your own rhythm with your own voice patterns. That's great. I just want you to ask the questions in the right order. BJ is probably smiling because that was one of the things that he struggled with early and it bugged me. Okay? But again, having the questions in the, in the proper order reduces the amount of, of uh, rabbit trails you end up on and, and, uh, and, and objections you have to handle. So it's, are you thinking about making a move next little while? Do you currently rent or do you own? If you were to move, when would be the ideal time? I, probably, I think I skipped over what area are you interested in, which I'm okay with. When, if you were to move, when would be the ideal time for that? You see, if somebody says, I'm thinking about making a move, yeah, I'm just kind of kicking it around, I'm talking about it, then when you phrase it, oh, okay, if you were to move, when would be the ideal time for that, usually connects with somebody and gets them to tell you kind of when their ideal time is. All right? And then if you were to move, do you have a real estate agent to help you? With it? Or then you, they, they tell you the answer and you say, do you have a real estate agent to help you when time's right? So those are the questions that cover timing and motivation in the middle of the, the script. And then this is where we transition to the most important uh, of the universal callback script. The reason we drill on it and practice on it every week is because if you start to learn the language of benefits and speaking the language of benefits to your prospect, to even your clients, you have more happy clients, clients that are more likely to refer you, and um, you have quicker closings. You see, remember, people only listen to one radio station, and it's WIIFM, what's in it for me, radio. So you, if you recognize that as a, pers as a salesperson, and you phrase things in such a way that you present the benefit, you're going to win. And by the way, it's also good because you're serving them. You're helping them. You're not manipulating them. So the goal, we call it the gold brick, and we want the offer to be so compelling, so benefit-rich, that they would never cancel an appointment. It's almost as if they were driving across, the, 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 across town to pick up a gold brick. They'd never cancel. So the compelling benefit statement would be, you know, if you had any interaction at all with them, I'd say, well, you know, hey, Hey, Adam, I, I got an idea, you know, sounds like you might be interested in getting a bargain. You know, what if I could get you priority access to bank foreclosures, short sales, estate sales, all the best bargains before they're on the MLS or before they're on the Internet? Do you think that might help you get a bargain? And then you stop. The most common mistake here and the most fatal mistake of all is when you don't wait for an answer here because if they don't understand that there's no that there's no cost, no obligation and there's a big benefit, you cannot close for an appointment. So the question so you have to stop and wait for an answer before you go to the appointment ask. So it sounds something like, "Hey Adam, you know, it sounds like uh, you might be looking for a bargain, you know. I guess I got an idea that could help you, you know, I, we could get you priority access to bank foreclosures, short sales, estate sales, all the very best deals 
before they're on the MLS, before they're on the Internet, the best part is that it's no cost or obligation. Do you think that might help you get a bargain? And then you wait. That's the compelling benefit. You can never commingle it with the appointment. That would sound something like, oh, hey, uh, Adam, uh, I got an idea. When's a good time for us to get together so that we can take down your criteria and get you priority access, insider access to all the best deals, the best bargains? Nobody else knows about them. Uh, before they're on the MLS, before they're on the Internet, and it doesn't cost you anything. It's no cost or obligation. You think that might help you get a bargain. You see, I tried to say that more or better or more compelling, but I can tell you that from years of experience, the prospects stopped listening to you when you said, when's a good time for us to get together? Because that's not what they were anticipating. They wanted to search in anonymity. And here's some guy calling them. All right? And then there's a way to, you know, there, we can go through some objection handlers a little bit uh, later on the call here. So who wants to role play with me? Brian, I'll give it a shot. Universal callback right. script. Great. Ring, ring. Let's do it. Hello. Hi, may I speak to Scott, please? Yeah, this is Scott. Hi, Scott. Brian calling from Free Washington Search. I was just calling to make sure the website was working out for you okay? What site? I never heard of that site. Scott, it's the website I believe you signed up for. Uh, it's got all the homes on it here in Washington for sale. Are you planning on making a move soon? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Great. Do you uh, currently rent or own, Scott? I rent. You rent? Okay. And uh, what areas are you interested in moving to, do you suppose? Bothell. Bothell area. Great. And if you had to uh, to make a move, when would be the ideal time? My lease is up in about two months. About two months? Okay. Do you have a realtor that you're currently working with? I got a few different ones looking for deals for me. Okay. Good, good. Well, are you 100% committed to any one of them? Mm, no. Okay. Well, great. Well, listen, Scott, I've got a, uh, an idea for you. What if I could get your priority access to bank foreclosures, short sales, estate sales, all the best deals before they're on the MLS or the Internet, and you'll know about them before anyone else? No cost or obligation to you. Do you think that would help you get a good deal? Hmm. Sounds pretty good. Um, how about I just give you the criteria and you can just email me. I want a three-bedroom, a two-bathroom, a two-car garage with a little bit of a yard. Not too much of a fixer-upper, but a little bit of work is fine. Um, you know, and I want to be in the, you know, 250, well, preferably below 300,000. Uh, can you send those over to me? Actually, you know, Scott, I'd love to do that for you, but what might happen is uh, I'd be filling your email with hundreds of different uh, listings that would fit that criteria, and I really want to do a good job for you. So I think it's really important that uh, I, don't, I just don't want you to miss out on the perfect deal. I really want to do a good job for you, like I said before. When is a good time for perhaps one of my area experts to get together and meet with you for about 15 or 20 minutes to take down your exact criteria so I know exactly what you're looking for? Maybe tomorrow afternoon, uh, I have two appointments available with area experts for the, uh, that are up in the Bothell area. Would that work for you? So I got to meet? I'm sorry, I missed that. So I have to meet? Yeah, actually, you know, we, we prefer one of our area experts to meet with you so they can kind of get a real feel for what you're looking for, not just in words or emails, but get kind of see through your eyes what you're looking for. It's a 15 a 20-minute meeting, like I said, no cost or obligation to you, and uh, I, I really think that this w would help you out. Uh, does tomorrow afternoon work? Maybe no around thanks. 2 o'clock? I got to go. No thanks. Talk to you later. Okay, thanks, All right, Scott. let's help Brian. <laughs> Anybody want to help Brian? DJ and Adam sitting here yelling at me. We're not yelling at you. It wasn't that me. bad, but I wouldn't have. Uh, I'm not going to sign up with you. Why? Um, I was rambling a little bit. Uh, no, let's let other people do it. Let's let other people okay. help you. Okay. Are you sure the other mics are unmuted?
Adam? All unmuted. Did you give, uh, click the phones so that they send them the audio pens? Crickets out there. Nobody wants to listen or nobody wants to help you, Brian. That's too bad. Muted. Unmuted. What are you guys, uh, I'm joking. <laughs> well, Adam and DJ, why didn't I sign up with Brian? Um, I would say the call was going exceptionally well. Um, the, the only reason I would think that you didn't want to book with him is because he sounded monotone. When he said, hey, I got an idea, it didn't sound spontaneous. It didn't sound like there was really an idea. It, it kind of sounded like he was reading off of a script. Maybe. Yeah. I didn't like that part. He didn't want to do a good job for me. He didn't use the good job phrase. I did. I, I, I thought I heard him say he, he just wanted to do a really good job for I you. I said it twice. And only wanted to get your exact criteria taken down. Yeah. But out, outside of, uh, he got all the questions right. He asked, he asked them in order. The only thing that I would I would suggest is that he would try to make the the universal callback script become a dialogue and try to change some of it up so that it becomes his own. Mm. Well, by now, it needs to sound more natural. Who else wants to go? No, I'll tell you, Brian, why I didn't sign up. I think you were right. Um, it, it was too monotone for sure. And then um, I didn't really feel like you were going to try and do a good job for me. And you didn't really compel me. You didn't tell me that it was different. Hey, I can get you, uh, you know, anybody can send you properties and flood your email box from all the different properties from all the different real estate companies that are for sale. But our list actually includes stuff that's not yet on the MLS or not yet on the internet. It's unique. And I just want to do a good job, so I only send you properties that perfectly match your criteria. So I just you know, was hoping to get together with you for a quick 20 minutes, no cost, no obligation, just so we can only send you stuff that perfectly matches. It's perfect for a busy person like you. So, Brian, you need to practice that so it sounds like you care and you're compelling. Because when you sound monotone, you don't sound like you care. And I know, and I know you do care. I do indeed, yes, sir. All right. So who else wants? Is Paul Favreau on the phone? Paul's here, and uh, he's taking over. So say ring ring to start it. Okay. <laughs> ring ring. Hello. Hi, uh, Mr. Miller. This is Paul Favreau with uh, FreeWashingtonSearch.com. I was just calling to make sure that the website is working out well for you. I never signed up for some website. Um, well, that's how I I, uh, I received your your message. So uh, I do believe you did. And, and what we're looking at is uh, I was just calling to make sure that the website was working out well for you. Are you by chance planning to make a uh, move sometime soon in the real estate market? All right, bud. We'll take a time out there. So it takes practice. See, I make it sound easy, don't I? And yeah. So did Brian even. Right? So right. even in the introduction, what were a couple things we could help Paul with? I don't like to say dot, I don't like to say dot com. That's minor. Yeah. Yeah, we just did the free Washington search and website working out. And then I'm actually looking at his script, <clears throat> and I will get it fixed right away. On his script, it doesn't go, it doesn't have, it jumps straight to when they say, who who are you, or, or or I didn't sign up for that. It doesn't have, oh, the website with all the homes on it that you were browsing around on. Yeah. Oh, it it yeah, actually it restates. So I'll, I'll go ahead and put that in there for you. Okay, yeah, we'll just get him the updated flowchart one. That's okay. So I the will. key yep. the concept is, Paul, you're actually helping everybody that's listening. Because the concept is, you just, I'm like water off a duck's back when you, if you give me, if, if I say, hey, hey, Paul, it's Scott with Free Washington Search and just calling to make sure the website's working out okay for you, it doesn't matter what you say. Right. 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 Like, it's either I love it, it goes into the I love it category, and then I say, wow, that is so great to hear. Are you thinking about making a move in the next little while? 
or the, what are you kidding me? I hate it. I don't know who you're talking about. Why the hell are you calling me? Whatever. Right. I never registered. That's in the other category. The other right. category, I have practiced a okay. quick yeah. answer to that. And the quick answer is, hey, uh, oh, geez, you know, that's the website you registered on to see all the different houses from all the different real estate companies. Are you thinking about making a move in the next little while? Okay. Right. When you said it, you said, um, yeah, you yeah. did register. It was like you wanted to pick a fight with me. Right. No, I, I, I got uh, I got a little bit uh, blindsided there. I, I think it probably would have been helpful if that I had that script uh, updated because uh, I would have dropped into that. Oh, no, we want to make it as hard as possible for you, Paul, to can come and learn how to sell houses. We're trying our best. Understood. No, I'm kidding. We should give you, we should give you some better tools. All right, who are we to try? Who else wants to try? Adam or DJ, let's do it. I've got a couple people having a really hard time logging in, Scott. Oh, thank you, Denise. I was thinking, uh, but see, I can't see my screen, so I can't tell right. Right, right. Um, who's trying or who's not here, and nobody's right. been pulling along with me. Yeah, so they're they're trying to they're trying to re-register -re again and get on, but hopefully in a couple minutes they'll be on. Okay, great. Okay. Adam or DJ, I'll do you guys want to do one right, maybe? Yeah, <laughs> I'll role play wow. with you. What's that? Ring, ring. Hello? Hello, man. I speak to Scott. Yeah, this is Scott. Hey, Scott. Uh, my name is David. I was just giving you a call from Free Washington Search. I wanted to see how the website was working out for you. Yeah, it's working out all right. Oh, perfect. Were you looking at making a move, soon? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Okay, well, do you currently rent or do you own now? I rent. Okay. Um, what area are you thinking about moving to? Oh, like Bothell, Kenmore, maybe. Gotcha. And uh, if you had to put a timetable on when you were going to uh, move, when would you say that was going to be? Yeah, my lease is up in like five months or so. so. Uh, do you have a, a real estate agent to help you out when that time does come around? Uh, you know what? I'm just looking for the best deal. I don't. I don't need a real estate agent. You know, or yeah. you know, I got a bunch of them out there looking for me. Gotcha. Would you say you're 100% committed to any of those agents? No. No. Right. Well, you know, Scott, I just wanted to let you know that in addition to the properties that you're already receiving from us on the Internet, I'd like to help you get uh, priority access to our other list that includes bank foreclosures and short sales. They're the best deals that are available in Washington. It's also a free service without any cost or obligation. But the best part is that you will know about all the, all the properties before anybody else. Do you think that having that type of insider access would help you out in finding a great deal? Sounds pretty good. Sounds expensive, though. Well, no, like I said, Scott, um, it's uh, no cost or obligation. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. Why don't you just email me that thing over? You, you know, Scott, Scott, yeah, yeah, Scott at gmail.com. Got it, Scott at gmail.com. But I, I could email it over to you, but I don't want to flood your email box with hundreds of different properties that you don't have any interest in seeing. We want to do a really good job for you and take down your exact criteria and only send you the stuff that you're interested in looking at. When would be the best time to get together for about 15 minutes to get that criteria taken down? How about tomorrow afternoon? Tomorrow afternoon? Now, that, that would work out just fine. Um, our office is located here in Bellevue. We're just south of the Bellevue Square Mall. Do you know where that is? Yeah, it's way too far for me, though, man. I'm not... I'm looking in Boston, Kansas, I'm not driving to Bellevue. No problem. You know, I know there's a a, a Starbucks across the street from uh, Safeway on uh, Northeast Bothell Way. Do you know where that is? Yeah, I can do that. I, I, I can have one of my area experts meet you there tomorrow at, say, like 1130. Does that work out for you? Yeah, that's great. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and Google that exact location and send it over to you in an email. Uh, just do me a favor. When you receive that email, can you just send me a quick reply? That way I know you got it okay. It didn't get lost in cyberspace or something like that. You bet. All right, perfect. And uh, just one other thing before I let you go, Scott. Are you looking at purchasing this house by yourself or with someone else? No, my wife. Okay. Is your wife also going to be able to make it to the Starbucks at 11 o'clock? No. Okay, well, why don't we do this? I'm, I'm pretty sure she's going to have some type of say in what the criteria you guys purchase a house in. 
why don't we Not move really. it to a more convenient time when she can be there with you? No. I, I, she, she'll do whatever I decide. She doesn't want to be bothered with it. She's not really sure about buying a house or not. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, sounds, sounds a little, sounds understandable to me. Um, are you guys looking at paying cash for the house, or are you guys looking at financing? Oh, no, we're going to get financing. Okay, have you guys already been pre-approved? Because not only do we want to make sure that you like the house that you pick out, but we also want to make sure that it fits well within your budget. So have you guys already been pre-approved, or did you need our assistance with that also? Mm. Yeah, I talked to some people at the bank. Right, but they but they didn't give you a pre-approval letter or anything like that yet? No, not really. Oh. They just hey, you know like, what? You know, they said if you buy a 300000 it would be, you know, like 1800 a month or something like that, which I can explain. Right. Hey, you know what? No, no problem. Uh, we actually have a preferred lender that we use. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have him give you a call here in about the next 30 minutes so we can also help you out with that pre-approval process. I already talked to the bank. Right, but like I said, we, we want to make sure that it fits well within your budget. We don't, want to, we don't want you to pick out something and, you know, that, that doesn't work out exactly the way you want it. All right, sounds good. Have him give me a call. All right, so I'll go ahead and have him give you a call here in about 30 minutes, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. All right, thanks. <clears throat> Bye. You're welcome. Have a, have a good day. Testing. Testing. You hear us, Scott? Yeah, I can hear you. Finally. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I'm glad you kept trying. I was getting lonely. And, these, and my guys yeah. at the office are like, good God, will somebody else chime in or they're just going to keep going? So how much do I like my day's appointment with? with? With that particular appointment, I go ahead and still book it. However, if he does not talk to Tyrone or if he does indicate when I follow up with him in the morning to confirm the appointment, if he hasn't talked to Tyrone or if his wife isn't there, I'm going to move it to a different date and time until everything else matches up. I just said my wife wasn't coming. But, but you also said that you have to be also. So as it stands now, it's not a good appointment if it is kept. <clears throat> So overall, DJ, that was an excellent appointment, an excellent way to run the universal call out skill. Okay, you did a good job. That's that's something that people need to take note of. Uh, where it got wobbly is in the post booking script. So if if you're on a, a PC with with speakers, or if maybe you guys in the office have um, two two computers kind of side by side, if you could mute one of them, because I'm getting a lot of uh, feedback there. We're all um, on one phone here, Scott. All right. That goes for anybody on the line. If you need your own mic, that might help. But anyway, the, the got a little wobbly in the post-booking script. That would be my only observation. And you're right. We, You would want to follow up and probably unbook that one if they don't. Definitely unbook it if they don't talk to, to the preferred lender. But I want you to feel okay with asking questions like, oh, well, geez, I would, um, I've found that you did. a couple buying a house, we really want to understand the perfect home through both of your eyes. And usually you guys work well as a team, and we can learn a lot from you as a team. Um, it's really no trouble to meet maybe in the evening when both of you might be able to do that. Would that be okay? Okay, that that's a different. Unmuted. Uh, you owed me. You didn't even take on the fact. Muted. I'm gonna bring my wife. Unmuted. DJ, why? DJ, did you guys mute your own phone, maybe? <laughs> DJ. We went to lunch. Yeah, I guess so. You guys in my office, you need to unmute the computer. So, can anyone else on the line? Yeah, try Does everybody else understand that part? 
So the point I'm making with DJ is that he got a little nervous when I said I didn't want to bring my wife. And that that is a judgment call I allow the ISAs to make if they really want to let, you know, earn their way into uh, – but I don't like single-leg appointments. And so what I want the inside sales people to do is think on – is to plan and think and present a benefit. So the benefit would sound something like, you know, you know, hey, hey Adam, uh, I know that you, you mentioned that you're going to make most of the decision there or all of it with your wife, but what I've found is that it's really helpful for me to understand and get our area experts to understand what exactly you're looking for by understanding and hearing the different aspects of the house from both of you. It will give me a much better way to serve you better so I can see it through both of your eyes. Would it be okay if we could just maybe delay the meeting till the evening and, and then she could join us as well? All right. If you if you run through the script too robotically, you could book crummy appointments. And what I think DJ was planning to do is maybe unbook that one if if the guy doesn't get his pre approval letter. But I want everybody to, to understand the mission is to have good appointments, people that two, two if it's a couple buying, and people that will um, bring their pre-approval letters will get pre-approved with our lender. That's what maximizes our outside sales agents efficiency, and that's what gets everybody in the organization paid. So who else wants to yeah. participate? All right, let's do it. I've gone here, Scott. Ring, ring? Wait a minute. Let's let somebody else from the group do it. Is this Brian again? What's your group? Who's there his office? But oh. You're on. Am I doing it? Yep. Okay, uh, ring, ring. Hello. Hi, this is David with S. Monterey Bay Homes. Just calling to make sure the website was working out well for you. Yeah, I like it. Fantastic. Are you looking to make a move in the next little while? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Oh, excellent. And do you currently rent or own? I own. Do you own? Do you need to sell your property first? No, I'm just looking for a rental. Okay, that makes sense. And what areas are you interested in moving into? South Salinas. South Salinas, excellent choice. And if you were to move to South Salinas, when would be the ideal time? No, I just want to find the right property, you know. Yeah. So I want to make it okay. cash flow, put a good renter in it. Makes sense. And do you have a realtor to help you when the time is right? No. Okay, fantastic. Well, I have an idea. What if I can get you priority access to a proprietary list of bank foreclosures, short sales, estate sales, really all the best deals before they're on the MLS to the Internet? Do you know about them before anyone else? and it's absolutely no cost or obligation. Do you think that'll help you get a good deal? That sounds good. Fantastic. When would be a good time to sit down for about 15 minutes so I could take down your criteria? Would mornings or evenings work best? Evening. Evenings? Okay, how about uh, tomorrow at 4 o'clock? Okay. All right. And where would be the best place to meet? Would you like to come by our office or meet at a place near you? Yeah, there's a Starbucks over there uh, on Main. Let's, let's meet there. Starbucks on Main? Excellent. I'm going to send you an email to confirm our appointment. Uh, let me just make sure I have your email address correct. Is it scottmiller at gmail.com? Yep. Okay, and what's the best phone number to reach you, Scott? This one. This one that... Eight three one 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 one. Yeah, the one you just called. Yep. Okay, fantastic. If you could just reply to my email, so I know you got it, I'd really appreciate that. And before I let you go, are you buying the home with anyone else? Um. Well, I, you know, it's an investment, so. Okay. So just you. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. And do you have your financing in order? Yep. All right. Fantastic. If you don't mind, could you bring a copy of that pre-approval letter? 
why? Well, Scott, part of our VIP buyer program is us showing you properties that perfectly match your budget. We're only trying to sell you homes that you're comfortable buying, and some sellers won't even let you see a house without a pre-approval letter. So can you just bring that with you when we meet? Yeah, sure. All right, fantastic. I'll be seeing you tomorrow at 4 o'clock on the Starbucks in South Main. And just please reply to my email so you got it, and I'll see you then. Sounds good. All right, sounds good. Nice job, David. I feel like I made a mistake because you were way easier than usual. <laughs> wow. So we all said, we're like, why is he laying down for David? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I just busted chops for 25 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> that's more That's more of how this calls usually go. Um, and you sounded confident and, and smooth. I liked it. Yeah. All right. That was good. Mm -hmm. I was has, I was gonna mess with you about my wife, uh, but I had already done that once. So, um, no, you did good. I like that one. That was uh, you know you got you got me you got you got me to bring a pre-approval letter. I wasn't all that thrilled about it, and uh, you still presented a, a coherent and logical reason why. Makes perfect sense, right? And the reason I didn't bust your chops really is because you you had what sounded. You know, they were logical, well thought through uh, concepts and answers to my questions. But it's because you practiced, I think, because I've heard you before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't start off so well. Uh, all right, who else wants to go? That was a good one. I like that one. I'll go. All right, let's do it. Okay, ring ring. Hello. Hi, Scott. Yeah. Hey, Scott, this is Mark with Best Monterey Bay Homes. I was just calling to make sure that website was really working out well for you. I don't know what website you're talking about. It's the website that, um, it, uh, that you registered for to view all the houses online. Are you looking to make a move in the next little while, Scott? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Great. Do you currently rent or own? I rent. All right, terrific. Now, what areas, Scott, are you interested in moving into? South Salinas. Okay, perfect. It's a great place. Now, if you were to move, when would be the ideal time, Scott? Mm, they're kicking me out here in about uh, three weeks. Oh, terrific. We better get moving. All right, do you have a realtor to help you when the time is right? No. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, Scott, I've got an idea. What if I could get you priority access to a proprietary list of bank foreclosures, short sales, estate sales, and all the best deals before they're on the MLS or even the Internet? And you'll know about those before anyone else. And it's no cost or obligation to you, Scott. So do you think you, that would help you get a good deal? Yeah. Great. Well, when would, be, when would be a really good time to sit down for about 15 minutes, take down your criteria? How about uh, would uh, mornings or evenings work best? Now, how about tomorrow afternoon at the Starbucks on Main? What time would work for you, Scott? 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock it is. Okay. We'll have one of our area experts there to meet you at 2 o'clock at the Starbucks on South Main. I'm going to send you an email, Scott, to confirm our appointment. And we're going to send that to uh, scott at gmail.com. Yep. And your phone number is 555-1212? Exactly. Terrific. All right. So if you just please reply to my email. So that I know that you got it. And uh, hey, listen, Scott. Before I let you go, uh, are you uh, buying the home with anyone else? Nope, just me. Okay, terrific, Scott. Hey, and Scott, do you have your financing in order? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure about that. Well, the reason I ask is because we can provide you a free second opinion if needed. Now, if it's even if it's just the first opinion, we can go ahead and get that for you and. If you don't mind, uh, what I'd like to do is, is get you set up with Frank so he could uh, talk to you for just a few minutes and uh, get you pre-approved. It only takes 15 minutes on the phone. Well, um, I just want to see if I can find a house first, you know, and then, uh, you know, I've talked to some people at the bank. I'm sure it'll work out fine. So I'll well, do that's tomorrow. Fine. And I, 
I can appreciate that, Scott. The only problem is, is when we show you as part of our VIP buyer program, we show you these properties. The banks and the uh, you know and the sellers require a pre-approval letter before we can actually show you the houses. So, and for a busy guy like you, like I said, it only takes about 15 minutes on the phone, and you'll go right through it, and we'll get you hooked up and be able to get this thing going for you. Will that work for you? Nah, I'll just bring one. You'll bring what? Your pre-approval yeah. letter? Yeah. So you have a pre-approval letter, Scott? No, I've been talking to this guy at the bank, so. Yeah, well, Scott, I'd love to, and like I said, I'd love to meet with you, but really, before we can show you any of the properties, we really need a bank pre-approval letter. So maybe yeah. I'll just have, uh, have our guy, Frank, give you a call and uh, spend a few minutes on the phone for you, get you all taken care of. All right, and there's all right. No, no cost or obligation to you, Scott. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's probably easier than me going back to the bank. Okay. Have okay, I'll me. get them all set up, and what I'll do in that email, I'm also going to put his contact information should the two of you have uh, trouble getting together because we want to make sure that you get together before okay. we meet tomorrow afternoon. So if, we'll, if he doesn't get a hold of you this afternoon, he'll certainly uh, touch base with you tomorrow morning so we meet at 2 o'clock. So okay. being uh, that all said, we'll see you tomorrow. Just uh, reply to that email for me, Scott, and look forward to meeting you. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. You bet. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right. What do we see there? What do you guys think? Uh, he danced around a little bit, but I thought he did a good job then to pull it back together. Because you kind of yeah. threw him a curveball with, uh, I'll bring a pre-approval letter. But he uh, yep. he asked to make sure you had it just to make sure and uh, and then got you to the lender. Yeah, that was good because you, you knew I didn't have one. But you didn't really make me feel like I didn't have, you know. I like well, I didn't want to call you a liar. That was very good. I've uh, I've heard it get off the rails there when people are uh, newer and haven't practiced. That was good. I like that. I also said they were kicking me out in three weeks. Did you catch that? Yeah, but I, I thought that was probably because you had too many cats. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's the uh, perfect point is that you, you want to olay that one. You want that one to just run right on by you. Like you yeah, the, it wasn't uh, going to be me that delivered fighter. a bad message, so I figured that's the reason why we get to free through. <laughs> that's very good. That's exactly right. Uh, you're making me smile for sure. Um, uh, very good. Very good. Anybody else want to try? That was outstanding. One of your best, if not the best, because I didn't just roll over. I threw you a couple of curveballs. You didn't bite on any of them, and you made me, you didn't, I deserve to be called a liar, but you didn't, and you also got what you wanted. Okay, which was, thank you. Uh, was the, um, you know, the guy to be able to call, your, your lender to call, and that was, that's exactly how you're supposed to do it. And then, of course, if you don't connect with the lender, you just unbook it the next morning. If you want to try to unbook it, hey, um, David Yee, why don't you unbook that appointment? Sorry? Call, call me and unbook it. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, oh great. All right. Uh, right you, a you asked me that question on an earlier call. You were you were uncomfortable about that. I remember that. I'm all my remember things. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, ring, ring? Hello? Hey, Scott, this is David from Beth Monterey Bay Homes. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. I can't wait to meet you, too. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Hey, Scott, I was just thinking, and I see you haven't spoke to our lender, uh, Jason, yet. And so yeah, I haven't had a chance to do that. That guy never calls me. How come he never calls me? Oh, that's weird. Let me see if he's available right now, and I can transfer. What's that? I said, uh... Let me see if he's available right now, and I can transfer you over. Okay, let's do it. Hi, this is Jason. Uh, is this Scott? <laughs> you guys are pretty good. I like that. Uh, I, I guess we're assuming uh, that there's not there. Yeah, let's okay, see then, uh, more than that. 
All right, unfortunately, uh, the lender's not here right now, but I left them a voicemail to give you a call. How about we push the appointment back maybe two or three more days to give you guys time to connect? Um, okay. All right, Scott, so how about we move back to maybe Thursday at 6? Yeah, if you move it back, that's that's good. If you move it back two or three days, you're never going to see that person again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like a day? No, so I'd move it back one day and give him a sense of urgency to call that guy. Oh, okay. man, I'm so sorry he hasn't called. I, I promise you he's going to follow up and he'll follow up. It's very unlike him not to follow up with you. Even when you know for a fact your lender has called him three times, you just hmm. let, let the guy save face. Okay. Let, let the prospect save face and then put some pressure on him to get it done um, by, for tomorrow's meeting. Okay. Makes sense. You guys are on your game today. It's awesome. <laughs> um, do you guys what want about, to um, yeah, do you guys want to come book some appointments for me? I'm yeah. kidding. I'm I sure had a couple that, I'm about sure that's uh, getting some uproarious laughs in the office while I'm not there. Go ahead, David. What's your question? We just been having trouble with uh, compelling voicemails. Like we talked to somebody, we have an appointment that uh, booked her for some reason. It just fell through, and then we try to follow up and try to get a hold of him again. Oh, he's having a lot of trouble, and so we go to voicemail, and we try the, hey, this is David, give me a call back, or uh, we try the, uh, hey, we have a really great property for you, and then hang up, but I'm just trying to figure out a way to make it more compelling to try to get a couple more of those uh, those leads where we might have made a mistake originally to give us another shot by getting on the phone with us. All right, so give me some specific, um, so the call and call, hey, it's David, call me back, that only works when they don't know who you are. Okay. Okay. So they they know if you guys have booked an appointment and that appointment wasn't kept mm -hmm. or it got uh, changed, it's a high degree of likelihood that you're getting screened. Mm -hmm. So you need to um, you need to switch the number you're calling on. Okay. okay. So uh, all my guys um, they're taught to you know use. Our office line actually comes up as if Scott Miller is calling, not as if Miller Lane Properties is calling from their desk only. That's how our phone system is set up. And then okay. they're also taught to use their cell phone, um, you know, like to continue the efforts to try and um, connect with someone. So, okay. in fact, I'm in the process of, uh, of refining our ISA manual, and I'll be putting it out there for uh, you guys. But... Um, where I'm even going to script out that if day one you call from the office phone, day two you need to call from your cell phone, just so okay. that we can. Um, so what's and likely what about, happening is that is that they notice your number and they're letting you go to voicemail, and so mm -hmm. the David message won't won't work. Okay. And then um, so then if you have talked to them and something got messed up, um, you, you probably want to specifically reference what got messed up. Okay. Is it is there a pattern like uh, that you can uh, I can help you with or? Um, I mean I've brought them up and we, I think we've hit most of them. Like one was just she was going to talk to her husband and then we never we were never able to get a hold of her again and we're still calling uh, every few days to try to get a hold of her but I haven't re got her for quite a bit. All right. So one of two things you know I I just I wish uh, I know that the guys in the office there with uh, Adam. Um, I don't know if they were getting a lot of feedback. Yet. But Adam and I just had this conversation the other day. Um, he and I went on an appointment together to meet a VIP buyer, and we VIP buyered this this young lady, and uh, and she gave me the. I could tell she was nervous because she signed the cancellation guarantee and then was hesitating to sign the um, agreement. Okay, mm -hmm. and and then um, it was it, she pulled the old. Well, you know, let me let me talk to my parents. I'm buying this with my parents who uh -huh. uh, weren't there. There's a whole other story behind that, right? Mm -hmm. And so she wasn't calling me back. Okay. And so the lesson that I taught um, uh, Adam is the same one I would have mentioned to you. One of two things is likely going through their head. Okay. Okay. They don't they don't believe you can get them a bargain. They don't mm -hmm. like. Um, um, or in that instance, it was they didn't want to sign an exclusive agency agreement. They wanted to have multiple agents working for them. Or 
Uh, they're just not interested in buying a house, and they got busy. Okay. Okay. So, so to to nail it right down to your specific instance, they that woman, right? She either didn't see a compelling benefit, or they're not going to buy a house. So okay. if she didn't if she didn't see a compelling benefit, she's just going to wander around and call listing agents. Mm -hmm. or make new properties that they're interested in, or they have an agent. So the reason I'm kind of digging into this is if you, and of course I'm speculating a little bit, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm basically extrapolating based on the couple miles of experience under my belt. Okay, so if, if they're thinking that, they're thinking that they either don't want an exclude, they don't want to meet, or they don't really think what you're going to do is different, so they don't want to meet, or they're not—they're just not compelled. It's in that kind of type of uh, category. You have to tailor the message that you make hmm. to kind of resonate. All right. Okay. So could you give me like a so, couple examples of? Yeah. Then you know? exactly what I'm going to do. So I would say, uh, well, hey Sally, we were going to—I'm sorry, it's Scott. Sorry, I missed you. Listen. Um, we just had, and then I would, we just had two properties get assigned in that area that no one else knows about. Um, there are three bedrooms, two bathrooms. It looks like all the stuff that you had um, kind of been looking at online and based on our conversation. Um, our VIP buyers are going to know about them before they get on the MLS or the Internet. Can you give me a call back so we can see if it might fit for you or maybe meet out there? Okay. Okay. And so I said two, and I specifically referenced how many bedrooms and bathrooms because I know that maybe you guys talked about that or you can see what her searches look like mm -hmm. in, in the search engine. And then if she calls back, um, you would just be ready to talk about or go see her and talk about expired listings or withdrawn listings, ones that are no okay. longer on the website. Or, you know, a short sale or a pre-market REO. Okay. And see what I said is is I or what I specifically tried to, to drill into in that example was, hey, we've got two different properties that no one else knows about and our VIP buyers know about them. I'd love to I'd love to see if they might be a fit for you. Okay, so okay. Uh, I should try to like customize it to their specific thing when I leave the voicemail. Yeah, and you if you don't if you're worried about feeling like your big brother. I've noticed that you're looking at all of the three-bedroom, two-bathroom houses in South Salinas, mm -hmm. right? You don't want to necessarily come across like that. It seems like, um, based on your, you know, our last conversation, that you were really focused on three beds and two baths in Salinas. Even if you know she never said that, mm -hmm. she won't remember what your conversation was. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Okay. And you can tell what you can tell what she was looking at on. Uh, you know, by just looking at her search yeah. history. Okay. All right. And then for so email, the, 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 the lesson, just one, one quick sec. The lesson is to, to not be as proposed. The lesson is to think and 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 project why they're avoiding you, and tailor the message to answer that specific concern or question, and and be compelling. Okay. All right. So, sorry. What was your next question? Uh, I was gonna say. So, probably the issue is we've been leaving to. Uh, we've been if they're avoiding us, they're not gonna answer that. But the message should be kind of tailored individually to each person. Yes. Okay. Yes, especially since you've talked to them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Hey, Sally. We talked a little bit ago. I don't know if. They, and then I would start with. Hey Sally, we talked a little bit ago, and I don't know if your plans changed. Maybe you're just not interested in in uh, getting access to bargain properties anymore. Maybe you're not buying one. Uh, would you please just give me a call back and let me know? So you know, I, I don't want to keep bugging you, but we did have a couple of new properties that came on that are three beds, two baths, and right in Salinas. Nobody else knows about them. Give me a call just so I know either way, please. Mm -hmm. right. You know, then give them my number and buy. You know, try and try and serve first. Try and show them that you do want to um, help them first. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're trying to connect with them on a human level 
and if you're just leaving like the generic kind of a more of a generic type of message, they're they're seeing through that probably. Okay, that makes sense. And that's that's the that's the hey, just you know, if they really are. But remember, there's a certain percentage of them that that lady was just, uh, you know, her husband said, under no circumstance are we buying another house. Mm -hmm. No, you're crazy, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and, and and you know, life got in the way of that. Mm -hmm. Fine, fine too. So don't beat yourself up. It's not necessarily all your fault. It's, you know, you can always tune up the mm. uh, But sometimes, sometimes that's why it's a numbers number. Okay, gotcha. Is that it? So, yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's about it. I had a couple of interesting things uh, yesterday, Scott. All right, fire away. I had a guy that uh, he's a little bit hard to get a hold of, uh, and uh, he doesn't tend to call people back. So I simply called him on my cell phone yesterday around noon, and he called me back about five, six hours later. Of course, the only thing I left him is said, "Hey," I said, "Hey, Miguel, it's Mark. You know, give me a call," and uh, gave my phone number. And that was it. Boy, he called me back and he said, "Hey, Mark, it's Miguel. You look great. How you doing, Miguel? Oh, good. Oh, good. He still had no idea who I was. And then when I Perfect. reminded him who I was, and we went ahead and we got into it, and, and uh, you know, and you know, went to the next step. Now, that was one. Then another one that I had called just right after I got off of that call because there was a lady that's not available until after six o'clock. I called her." And uh, got her on the phone. She was a little bit hesitant, and, and then she uh, loosened up as I was going through the script. And she said, "Well, it's going to be I, probably going to be a couple of years before I'm ready to actually buy something." And I said, "Oh, that's too bad." I said, "You know, some great deals out there now." Oh, well, well, maybe I'm ready now. And uh, you know, so we went on from there. So it was. Uh, I think it was she was getting she was feeling that sales pitch coming and uh, you know when she kind of loosened up and and uh, told it you know the deals are out there now then we went ahead and we got her scheduled talk with our uh, with our lenders so I think it's, I think that would be an interesting one to track because it could be you know could be that she just was feeling the sales pitch and uh, um, when you're and then that is when you you can be a little more casual about it and and, and then. Uh, yeah, it's too bad. There's some great deals. Yeah, who knows what interest rates will be like in a couple of years. But you know, I just like to keep in touch and let you, you know, search search for properties and, and all of that. It's too mm -hmm. bad uh, you're not able to take advantage of the inventory and the low interest rates now. But that's all right. It could work in the future. That that would have been my takeaway, and she probably would have bet too. But she bet on yours because you you talk. That's that's perfect. And the calling and just leaving your name if you've never connected with them. It definitely works. Hmm. Yeah, I was just calling like you know, like I was a, like an old friend, you know. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I had another question. We booked an appointment, but then um, the lender talked to him, and it didn't really seem like it was good for now. But in a few months, he said it would probably be good. What would be uh, the What would be the standard for staying in touch with them and keeping keeping them aware of us? while they're still uh, not able to buy the house? That's a tough one, man. Okay, so if it's a couple of months and it's a really simple credit fix, right? I think, yeah, I think um, the only thing they need to do is just uh, save up a little bit more for a down payment and it should be good to go. And, and they're motivated and they want to move in the next three to six months and it sounds like they could save money over the next four months, mm -hmm. I would actually book that appointment. And I would I would try and sign them to an exclusive agency agreement. Okay. If it was credit repair, if it was credit repair, that's a little more dicey, right? Because they actually have to take you know, and and so you know those are the you know the challenges that that you have to empower your inside sales team to to be smart and use their head and mm -hmm. uh, and trust them. So um, that that 
instance, I might I might go ahead and book them for the longer term and say, hey, listen, you know, I know that um, I know that you need to save some of your down payment for a few months, and you've talked to the lender. Uh, mm -hmm. But what I'd really like to do is get together and start to take down your exact criteria, just so that we can start to look for the the bargains, and I can learn kind of the, the perfect house, begin to see it through your eyes, so that when you have your um, uh, down payment ready, we'll, we'll be able to uh, snatch up a bargain. Because a lot of times um, there might be, you never know if your lender asked about gift money from others or anything like that, if it's if it's a short term. Now, if they say it's going to be six, seven, eight, nine months before they can save the money for the down payment, then I would just set them up on a search mm -hmm. and call them back in half the time. So call them back in... Uh, uh, There's not months. like a plan for staying in touch with them. Pardon me. There's not like a plan like every couple of weeks you call in and just say, "Oh, hi, I'm just checking up with you guys." No, no, no. A couple of weeks is too much. If if they say it's six months, you know, it's going to be three months. I usually mm -hmm. don't like to wait three months on a lead like that, but it might be two months. But I would definitely put a little bit of distance in between it, uh, so that it's you know two three weeks. You might ping them on email and then call them the following week so you're okay. like one month in. and uh it really depends on your lead volume too you know mm -hmm. um, um but that, that's how i would run that one remember okay. it's calling back in half the time is the is the general rule okay and then i was following up with inactive leads and just uh going through the people who signed up just went inactive they're on watch campaigns mm -hmm. and what kind of voicemail should i leave for something like that or should i leave one um, what do you mean inactive? Like uh, they sign up, they go through the life of the lead, and then after that we usually put them on a watch campaign and put a note just to, to call them at the end, end of the month and just see, try to get a hold of them see where they're at. And then if it went to voicemail, I was wondering, should I leave a voicemail there or? Yeah, I would just say, um, so if you look at Sally's search history and it's three beds, two baths, and Salinas, Mm -hmm. I would I would say oh hey Sally it's Dave with or uh, David with uh, Best Monterey Bay Homes uh, uh, there's been some new properties that came up in Salinas that are not yet on the MLS um, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to know if you had bought a house yet okay mm -hmm. if you call back or if uh, some of these look like a smoking deal just want to reconnect see if you bought a house already if you have congrats if not I'd love to help you no cost or obligation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, bought a, have you bought a house yet? Is really if they answer, you say, "Hey, I was just calling to check in. There's been some new properties that came up in Salinas, and I just want to know if you bought a house yet." Okay. And uh, you'll have some kicks in the abdomen, I guarantee it, because they'll you'll have some people in that list that have just bought a house. Okay. With no money else. And uh, and in fact, uh, uh, Denise, Mark, if they saw the thread, they. If they told you about the email, we've been having a lot of email traffic in the owners group about people that have been calling back through older leads and realizing that they missed out on the chance to saw a house or two, and mm -hmm. that's part of the thing. So it's, it's going to happen to you, I guarantee it. Okay. But that's life. It's all right. There's more fish in that sea. Yeah. All right. Any other questions or comments from anyone else in my office, outside of my office, on the call, anything? Uh, okay, guys, well, um, have a fantastic uh, Labor Day weekend. Enjoy it, and uh, hopefully you get out there and sell some houses in addition to it, because there's no better way to uh, enjoy your time off than when you have some commission dollars in your pocket. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, have a good one. Talk to you guys on Tuesday. Uh, See you. Bye-bye.